Hello, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a suggestion from Dancing Banana. Nice name, by the way. Uh, he says, make the sun switch with a planet. So my default idea would be make it switch with Jupiter. I mean, obviously, I mean, Jupiter is the biggest planet. But I was trying to think, how could I possibly do this? That might actually be difficult. Well, there is actually a little bit of a creative way I could do this. Instead of swapping the sun and Jupiter around, what I can do is I can pause the game because I don't really want to mess with its inclination, eccentricity, and all that. I want it to be exactly the same orbit as Jupiter without having to sit there and copy paste and change parameters and stuff. Well, what I can do with the sun is I can actually go to the mass, go down to Jupiter, and just set it to a value of 1. <laughs> so we have a molten planet here, which, ah, uh, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, whatever. And all I have to do is find the temperature, 2800 degrees. Was it that temperature when I was one? Sun? Hmm. Okay, what I can do is I can very quickly add a sun here and get the proper temperature, 5775 degrees. Okay. So what I can do here is I can go to Jupiter and change its value to one sun. It'll, it should turn into a black dwarf. Yeah, it's a black star, so it's incredibly, incredibly cold. But what was that, 5,775, I think? I'm going to have to place it again and check. Yep. Okay, so let's set its temperature to 5,775, which would be... There we go. Now we essentially have a sun that's named Jupiter. So there we go. We swapped the... Uh, Sun around with a planet, and let's just cool this down to like zero degrees Celsius, because why not? So there is our Jupiter, essentially. Which, as you can tell, is actually a uh, very dark object for some reason. Very odd. Let's go to uh, studio lighting. That's better. So it's a gas giant. Very fair. And uh, something tells me this is not going to end well. But let's see what survives. Here we go, let's hit play. So everything's immediately going to start shifting orbits. And if we go to our orbit map here, I think we actually might maintain these orbits. Right now it's not showing all of them. All these outer objects might actually go flying out and become incredibly eccentric, or we might just lose them all together. Watch the trails here, we should have Earth start bending towards Jupiter. But Jupiter is also being pull pulled towards some type of mass. Not really sure what though. Oh no wait, it's not being pulled towards a mass, it's actually moving in the same direction it was moving before. It's just no longer orbiting the sun. As you can see, the sun is actually about to start orbiting Jupiter. It looks like we might be able to keep Saturn if it does not collide directly into Jupiter. Or the new sun. As you can see, Jupiter is ejecting a bunch of small asteroids out into the outer solar system, possibly even out of the solar system. And it looks like we might lose Saturn. No, we are, we're still maintaining Saturn. But Earth appears to be gone. Now, I think this would have been a completely different result depending on which position of orbit it was at. But since it wasn't in the right position, it looks like we're losing Earth and most of our terrestrial worlds. Looks like what we are keeping is, weirdly enough, Ceres, which was actually... No, that's not very weird, because it's actually very, very close to Jupiter. So it looks like we're maintaining Ceres. The sun itself is, well, it looks like it's actually maintaining a rather, yeah, it's not even really an eccentric orbit, it's actually maintaining a nice round orbit. Very cool, and let's just fast forward a little bit and see what happens. Are we going to lose Neptune? We might actually get to keep Neptune. Or it's going to be slingshot out. I think it just got slingshot out. What about you, Uranus? Ah, Uranus is going to keep up. Are we still keeping Neptune? I don't think so. So it looks like we have definitely lost most of our solar system. That's rather unfortunate. Where's Ceres? So if Ceres is not burning up from Jupiter's uh, solar radiation, 
it should be able to stabilize an orbit. I don't think it's going to be non-incentric. The one concern is Saturn. If Sirius gets too close to Saturn, it could potentially be ejected out of this small system here. Okay, but we're getting a little bit of lag, so I'm thinking everything beyond this point is irrelevant. Let's get rid of all of this. This. And let's just pay attention here. If we have too many objects, it's going to lag up the game, so... As you can see, there's a couple small rocks just orbiting around Jupiter here. Or the new sun, quote-unquote. And it looks like Ceres is doing something a little bit weird here. No, wait, that's Saturn. As you can see, it's kind of rotating around. Let's see if we can speed this up just a bit more. Let's see if we can get these orbits to stabilize. Saturn's not a very dense planet, in fact. What is the density of Saturn? Yeah, not very dense at all. In fact, uh, the mass is 95 Earths, so... I don't know what its capability of ejecting Ceres is, but uh, I think it's definitely possible. But I think what we have more to worry about is possibly the sun ejecting Ceres out of the system. But if we can get Ceres to get a nice round orbit and not be so eccentric, we might actually be able to melt some of its surface ice and get it to possibly be habitable. But I don't think so. I don't think it's going to actually stabilize. I think it's at just too much of a risk of being thrown out. As you can see, Jupiter is doing all sorts of... Not Jupiter, the Sun, actually. Doing all sorts of crazy things with Saturn. <laughs> Saturn, I don't think, is going to be able to stabilize from this. Uh, Saturn's actually getting a small orbit around Jupiter. And it might just, uh, stabilize as a very close gas giant to the Sun, or Jupiter. I think, uh, the Sun out here is still tugging on Saturn. It's not really going to stabilize until it becomes a round orbit. Once it loses its eccentricity, it provided the Sun stops pulling it outwards. It should maintain a nice stable orbit here, but uh, let's go ahead and slow down time and just see how far the sun is actually orbiting. That's a semi-major axis of 5.18 astronomical units, so actually it was not really affected at all. I guess that would kind of make sense. I mean, I, did, I only swapped their masses around, I didn't actually like change anything significant with these two's orbits. They're still orbiting around each other the same way the rest of the system was thrown apart. And that's why I guess it's maintaining such a nice kind of round orbit rather than a highly eccentric one. Very shockingly is actually still completely stable in this system. I would have assumed it would have been thrown out by now. I wonder if that's due to its inclination actually uh, kind of sparing it. Not too sure. This looks like the end result, and we have Pluto way out here, all alone. As it was before, but now even more alone. Not having the Kuiper belt to comfort it. So yeah, I'm sure I can redo the simulation many, many times again and not get an exact re recreation of it. I'm sure it'll be different every single time I try it. And is Neptune still in orbit around here? I don't think so. But uh, yeah, that was kind of the end result on this uh, kind of first try. Anyways, if you guys like the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.